Hey gang, Keith here from Mind of Modern Man, back here in the truck for another edition of Truck Tales. Sorry it's been so long. I had this weird cold that lost my voice for like a month and a half. I wasn't able to talk loudly, but here I am. It's back for the most part. We're going to make it through today, and we're here for another Top 10. Today is a Truck Tales Mind of Modern Man Top 10 Favorite Scenes from Baseball Movies. <laughs> It's baseball season. The season has begun. We're a couple weeks in right now. Actually, right now, as I'm recording this, the Houston Astros are playing my New York Yankees. Now, Modern Man Jay is a huge Houston Astros fan, so I'm sure he's going to put some kind of rude comment right here, and his little head will pop up. We're going to see a lot of Jay's head popping up in these videos coming forward, I think. I think he's going to be a bigger part of trying to tell the story. But the Astros won game one. Game two is tonight. We always live to play another day, right? And it's still quite early in the season. But let's get to it. Let's get to the top 10 movie scenes. Now, these are my favorite movie scenes. Not necessarily the best. Not necessarily the best in cinematic history. But my favorite scenes, scenes that get me excited. Number 10, the classic, Pride of the Yankees. Black and white movie. You got Gary Cooper playing Lou Gehrig, who gives the famous, I consider myself the luckiest man in the world speech. Watch. People all say that I've had a bad break. But today, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Number nine, let's lighten it up a little bit. Leslie Nielsen, not exactly somebody that you think about when you think baseball movies, unless you're thinking about the naked gun. He puts himself behind home plate to try to find a bad guy, and in doing so, has to be an umpire. Let's see how it works. Number eight, The Rookie, Dennis Quaid. True story about a, uh, sci a high school science teacher that wants to be a major league baseball player. And he makes it. And he does it. And he's playing in the minor leagues for what seems like forever. He's getting ready to give up. He's got his wife and his young son at home. But then he gets the call. And the best part, he then gets to make the call and tell his son. Ugh. Number seven, League of Their Own. Now, of course, we can go ahead and we can do the no crying in baseball scene. I like that one. But one that gets me even better is when Jimmy decides to wake up and be a manager. And he's just not doing it. So Dottie stands up and she starts giving Marla Hooch some signs, you know, getting everyone to get ready to go. And Jimmy sees that she's giving the wrong signs and they have a little, like, sign off. It's really funny. <laughs> Number six, Kevin Costner, Bull Durham. Now, there's lots of great scenes where he hits the bull, where he's got to breathe through his eyelids, when they have lots of scenes um, with Susan Sarandon, but the scene where they're all on the mound, and they talk about all the different things that they need, and uh, Robert Wall comes out as the pitching coach to check on them, and, and of course, he's hilarious. Uh, he should be in a lot more movies. I don't know whatever happened to him. Our list was such a great show. But they have a conversation, and somehow they end up talking about wedding gifts and all kinds of things on the mound. It's, it's definitely a departure from baseball. Excuse me, what the hell's going on out here? Well, Nick's scared because his eyelids are jammed and his old man's here. We need a live, was it a live rooster? We need a live rooster to take the curse off Jose's glove and nobody seems to know what to get Millie or Jimmy for their wedding present. Is that about right? That's right. We're yeah. dealing with a lot. Hey, shit. Okay, well, uh, candlesticks always make a nice gift and uh, maybe you can find out where she's registered, maybe a place setting or maybe a silverware pattern. Okay, let's get to it. Let's go. Number five, let's talk about our favorite little league team. But you don't... <sighs> hey kids, Uncle Keith here. 
I'm here to tell you to go play Little League. It's baseball. You get to play. You start with T-ball. You start with your friends. Your, your parents can be on the field with you to help you to play. And you go through Little League, and you go through the majors, and you go through Babe Ruth, and then you can play for high school and go on from there. Forget lacrosse. Forget football. Kids used to play baseball. America's pastime. I did it. I loved it for years and years, and I cannot wait for my kids to want to do it, and they better want to do it. But... I think it's important for people to play baseball. It's a thinking man's game. You actually have to have all kinds of strategy. You have to do all kinds of fun things to it. And as a little kid, it's just fun. Go play. Go play Little League, please. Back to our list. Our favorite Little League team, the Bad News Bears, the original incarnation of these guys. Um, they were a Little League team that got chosen to play at the Houston Astrodome. And so in doing so, they got to play an exhibition game. But then it got a little bit too close to the Major League game, and they said, well, that's it. It's a tie. We're not going to do it. But then the crowd, the players, everyone involved, start asking to let them play. <laughs> Number four, you cannot have a baseball scene list without the home run from the natural. I don't even have to talk about it. Let the music do its thing. Go. Number three, The Sandlot, one of the greatest baseball movies ever made, and a lot of people don't usually put it in these lists, and it's a shame because it is a fantastic slice of Americana of young boys back in the day playing baseball and doing it just for fun. Um, there's a great scene. Uh, the Smalls loses his stepdad's Babe Ruth baseball over the fence to where the gigantic beast dog is, but his friend Benny the Jet decides that he's going to do a pickle with the beast and take him on head on. Number two, one of the greatest speeches in movies, forget about baseball, James Earl Jones in Field of Dreams stands up and delivers a speech about the romanticism, the love that America has with baseball. And it brings me to tears and chills every single time. People will come, Ray. You're broke, Ray. You sell now or you lose everything. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, is a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good and it could be again. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. 
My apologies to the movies that didn't make this list. Um, there's some great ones like Eight Men Out, uh, The Fan. There's some movies that are okay, uh, like Rookie of the Year. Moneyball is a great movie. Angels in the Outfield. Then there's movies that aren't that great, but still have some good scenes, like uh, Fever Pitch or Summer Catch, even. But um, they just didn't make my list here. I do want to give you a bonus. It's not a movie, it's a TV show. It's Aaron Sorkin, and I feel like I'm not working enough Aaron Sorkin into these videos, but there's an episode of Sports Night where Danny, played by Josh Charles, is running around telling everyone about the glory of the Giants win the pennant. And just watch. Giants come back from 13 and a half games, fall into a first place tie with guess who? The Brooklyn Dodgers. Now they play a playoff game to see who gets to go to the World Series. The Dodgers haven't won, right? Until a guy named Bobby Thompson. That's what they call a shot her around the world. I, I used to listen to this tape. There's this famous announcer's call, maybe the most famous ever. Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. His name was Russ Hodges, and he, he just kept going. He just kept going on. And the Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. I think I listened to a tape of Russ Hodges making that call, I don't know. <sighs> Every night for, I think, four or five years. <laughs> they like sports, don't you? They're not really good. All right, time for my number one favorite baseball scene. I'm looking for something that gives me chills, something that gets me excited, something that gets me pumped up, something that makes me want to actually go outside, pick up a ball, and start playing. And I don't think there's another scene in baseball movie history that gets the adrenaline pumping like when Wild Thing starts playing over the PA and Ricky Vaughn comes out from the bullpen. Give me Vaughn. You want Vaughn? I know he hadn't done very well against this guy, but I got a hunch he's due. So there it is. There's my top 10 list of baseball movies. Head down to the comments on our YouTube video or go over to mindofmodernman.com and tell us what yours are. Follow us on social and media. You got Instagram, you got Facebook, you got Twitter. Follow us on all those places and make sure that you let us know how you like this video too. We got more coming to you. I swear we're gonna be doing good work for you. As my grandfather always used to say to me, you do nice work, not much, but what you do is quality. So on. Hey! Thanks for watching. Thanks to all our patrons over at patreon.com for allowing us to do this kind of thing. Thanks to the gang behind the scenes at Mind of Modern Man. Remember to follow us on social media and also like, subscribe, and comment. We'd love to hear more. We'd love for you to watch more. We'd love more. So long.